So in this part, we're still in uh, handout nine, and uh, in this part of the lesson, we'll be we will be focusing our attention on uh, volume, not the average value. I believe we already done average value earlier, so we will focus our attention volume of solid of revolution, volume of solid of revolution. Okay. So um, the goal for this part of the lesson is you'll be able to find the volume of a solid of revolution. Um, basically, you know, there are different ways to do it, different methods. And we will focus our attention on only two methods. One is called volume of solid of revolution by disk method and volume of solid of revolution by Wasser method. What is that Wasser method? Okay, Wasser method is, should be all the way there. Anyway, yeah, here is the Wasser method. So these are the two methods that we will be working on. There is another method called uh, shell method. We don't do that in this course. That, that, that concept is out of the scope of this course. And also in all of these cases, we will focus our attention on volume of solid of revolution when the area is revolved around the x-axis. Okay, suppose this is the x-axis and here is the saturated region. And what we want to do is we want to revolve about the x-axis. And if you revolve about the x-axis, imagine you revolve about the x-axis then this is the figure that we will be getting, okay? This is what we call solid, formed by revolving this saturated region around the x-axis. So this is the solid that we are trying to find the volume, okay? This is the solid generated by revolving this saturated region around the x-axis and we will find the volume of this one. You know that if um, maybe what I want to do is, let me, uh, let me invite another guy just to give you a brief idea on this uh, volume of solid of revolution. And uh, what is that? Okay. I thought it's here somewhere. Anyway, let's look at this. Uh, can you see that uh, graph? Some for some reason it doesn't allow me to. Okay, let us suppose that this is the standard reason. Okay, y equals square root x. And when you draw the graph of y equal to square root x, then that's, uh, can you see the graph in your screen guys for y equals square root x? Okay, all right, so now, when I say revolving this sadder region about the x-axis, what does that mean? Let me revolve this sadder region and uh, what do I get? Okay, if I revolve that way, this is the solid that I'll get. And we're gonna find the volume of this solid. So how can we do that? Well, we just slice, slice, slice. And if I slice into small pieces, then notice that this slice is just like a disc. You know the DVD? It's just like a DVD. And so we know how to find the 
volume of the DVD. And since there are, you know, many, many discs combined together to form the solid. So what we, we, what we would do is we find the volume of one disc, another disc, another disc, and N disc, okay? Let's say there are N number of discs. So we find the volume of all of those N discs together, and then we sum them up and that creates, and that, that will, you know, that will give us a Riemann sum. And that's the idea. Just watch this for a while. Okay, now that is, we revolve about x-axis. Now, if we revolve about y-axis, what happens? Now I'm revolving about y-axis in this case. Okay, all right, let's come back here. Okay, give me one second. Now I believe when I say revolving about the x-axis, then I think you, you, you get the idea what I'm talking about, right? Now, before we talk about this, let me ask you one simple question. This is a cylinder, okay? Let's say the height of this cylinder is H and then this is your radius R. So how do you find volume of this cylinder? Pi R square H, everybody know that? Now what I would like to do is I want to put that cylinder in another form like this, okay? So I'm putting this cylinder like this here. This is also a cylinder, as you can see. I want to put this cylinder in that orientation. So again, what we did here is that this was the uh, area of a saddle region. We revolved about the x-axis and this is the solid that we get. And what we do is we want to take a one small stripe, one small rectangle, a random rectangle, and we just slice, 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 slice. There are many, many rectangles that you can um, create. And then uh, let me just randomly choose one slice and I revolve about the x-axis. So I'm gonna get uh, this disc. This is called disc, okay? And I want to denote this thickness of the disc by delta x, all right? Thickness of the disc as delta x. Now, remember, this is your y value, okay? This is your y, this is your r, r is actually y. So y means you can also write f of x. And since let's say this is your x1, x2, blah, 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 and this is just xi, you can write this is a random x, so you can write this as xi, okay? So now, using this formula, volume of this disk, pi r square h, so volume of this disk will be, volume of one disk is, uh, 
pi r. R means f of x, i. H is the thickness, you know, the height here is thickness delta x. That's the volume of one disk, okay? So volume of n disks will be, suppose there are n disks, then this is going to be add all of the volume, right? Volume of the first disk, second disk. So basically you will get summation of i runs from one to n, i f of, oh, this one is square. Sorry guys, this one is square. I forgot to write that. This is pi r square. r means y square. y means f of x square. So f of x i square delta x. So that's the volume of n disk. And taking limit, taking limit, n tends to infinity, what do I get? We'll get volume of all of the disks. There are infinitely many disks. So that will be limit n tends to infinity. I runs from one to n pi f of pi. You can write outside because pi is a constant. So let me write pi here. So you will get a summation i runs from one to n f of x i uh, square uh, delta x. And you know that this is a Riemann sum right? This part is a Riemann sum and we know that this is actually the definition of definite integral. So let me just copy pi here. So I'm going to get a to b uh, f of x square dx. So this is the volume of solid of revolution. So we can consider this as, as our formula now, okay? Volume of solid of revolution is using the Riemann sum, we got that v is pi a to b f of x square dx, all right? Let's use that formula and try to solve some of the questions. Uh, let's look at example seven. Find the volume of solid formed by rotating the area under the curve y equals or f of x equals three x and the x axis on the interval zero and one. All right, so here, uh, your f of x is given, which is 3x, and your a is 0 and b is 1. So let us find the volume of solid of revolution. So volume of solid of revolution is given by the formula pi a to b f of x square dx. That's it. Now, this means pi a is 0 to 1, 3x square dx, that's it. So that's going to give me pi 0 to 1, 9x square dx. I can write this 9 outside, so I'm going to get 9 pi. And so this will be 0 to 1, x square dx. So that means nine pi, and this is x cube over three, zero to one. So that's gonna give me nine pi over three and one cube minus zero cube, and which is gonna give me uh, three pi. Okay, that is the volume. Now, if you want to look at the graph, you know, look at the same questions graphically, what we did is, uh, this one is your y or f of x equals 3x, okay? Because y equals 3x, it is a straight line. I trust that everybody know how to draw this uh, graph, y equals 3x. Now, what I need to do is I need to revolve this area around the x-axis. So once I revolve about this x-axis, this area, then what I get is I'll get this, this figure, this solid. And this is the volume of this solid. Okay, this three pi is the volume of this solid. Any questions so far? Uh, 
Okay, now let's, I want you to try this example eight on your own. Okay, try this. Find the volume of solid of revolution generated by rotating about the x-axis the region under the graph of y equals e raised to power x from x equals negative 1 to x equals 2. So it means if you draw the graph, you don't have to draw the graph, but just in case if you draw the graph, maybe we'll look at that later. First volume of solid of uh, revolution, it is about x-axis, okay? Revolution is about x-axis. And here also it's about x-axis because this is already given. And the formula is I A to B F of X square DX. I A is negative 1 to 2 e raised to power x square dx. Okay, guys, let me know what do you get. So e raised to power x square is e raised to power 2x because if I give the questions in the exam, some people write this as e x square. No. Okay. Some people write this way. This is not correct. Be careful on that. And so this guy will be pi e raised to power 2x over 2 is and then negative 1 to 2 that's our lower limit and upper limit you're going to get pi over 2 e raised to power 2 times 2 minus e raised to power 2 times negative 1 which gives me pi over 2 and this is e raised to power 4 minus e raised to power negative 2 and uh, if you change it into a decimal you can just leave it like this or if you want to change if you if you want to change it into decimal and how much do you get somebody okay you guys got the answer uh, in chat box i'm just gonna copy your answer okay the final answer numerical value is 85 point uh, 85.55 okay because all of you got the so many of you got the same answer, then I trust that this is the correct answer because it's very difficult to get the same wrong answer. Okay, and if you look at this graphically, and this is what it looks like, okay? Because y equals e to the x is this graph here. y equals e raised to power x is the, this is the graph. And when you revolve about this x-axis, this is, this is the reason when you revolve about the x-axis, this is what you're gonna get, okay? You're just revolving about, and this is the graph. Now, let's look at one more. Let's try one more question just for fun, okay? In this example, find the volume of solid of revolution generated by rotating about the x-axis, the region between the curve y equals 2 minus x square and y equal to 0. Now, we know the formula. So volume of solid of revolution is given by pi a to b f of x square dx. We know this formula. 
I want you to find what is the value of A and what is the value of B. I want you to think and find these interval, okay? Value of A and B. I'll wait for you guys. To find interval A and B, let us find point of intersection. So point of intersection here is y equals two minus x squared and y equals zero. So point of intersection will be uh, two minus x squared equal to zero. And that's gonna give me x squared uh, equals negative x equals negative two. So you're gonna get x equals positive and negative square root two. So the interval is, so we need to find the volume of solid of revolution. A is negative root two and B is root two. So we got this. Therefore, volume of solid of revolution, let me just denote that by V here. So V is this, so V will be pi. A is negative root two, B is root two. And the function here is, um, you know, this f of x is uh, 2 minus x squared. So we're going to get 2 minus x squared squared dx. So that's what we get. Now, now it's a piece of cake for you. So you can write this as pi negative root 2 to root 2 a minus b whole square, that's gonna give you four minus uh, four x square plus x raised to power four dx. So then if you find the antiderivative of that, you're gonna get, okay, pi is there. So you're gonna get four x minus four x square divided by four x cubed divided by three plus x raised to power five divided by five, and the lower limit is negative root two and upper limit is root two. Okay, and then I trust that everybody know how to plug in this value. First plug in the upper limit and then the lower limit and let me know what is the final answer. And this is what I got. I want to verify this answers with you guys. So this, what I got is, I got 40, 64 pi root two divided by 15. Okay, I want to verify that with you. Any questions so far? Now at this time, we'll focus our attention on Wasser method. Okay, Wasser, you know what is Wasser, right? Bolt and Wasser and not, not Bolt and Wasser. They come together. So Wasser looks like this. There is a hole in it. Okay, if you want to screw something with, you know, with not bolt, then, you know, you usually put the Wasser. And so we know that Wasser has hole in it. Now, if we have a hole in it, then how do we find the volume of this solid? which has hole in it. Well, what we can do is let us suppose that this small one is my small r, okay? So this is my small r, this is my small r, and this is my big r. From here to there, this is my big r. So we know the volume of a small r is given by pi, again, a to b, the same, same idea as before, a to b r square dx. That's the volume represented by the small r. And what is the volume for the, you know, the whole part with the big r? Well, so the volume will be, I can say this 
a to b r square dr or dx. So this represents the volume under this big R. So because there is a hole and we need to subtract that part, basically we need to subtract this part there. Okay, when we have a washer, because this hole, it doesn't have the, you know, the solid has a hole in it. So we need to sub subtract that hole. So we need to subtract that. So what do we get? Well, we get this pi a to b r square minus r square dx. And that's the formula we'll be using. Okay, here is the formula. A to b r big r x square minus s small r x square. So let's look at one example. Now, Wasser method. So one thing that we need to pay attention is whether it's a Wasser method, you know, whether we are going to use a Wasser method or not. So for that, let's look at this part A. And in this case, generally, we need to draw the graph and this will tell us whether it will be a Wasser method or not. Okay, let's look at this A. Let us draw the graph, draw the graph. So if I draw the graph, then let us suppose that this is my, f is my this is square root x and my g of x is, let's say x square. Let us suppose that. And if I want to draw the graph, um, is square root x will be, this is my y equals square root x. This is my f function, okay? f of x is square root x is this function. And my z function is x square. y equal to x square is a parabola. So let me draw that parabola. So this is my g of x equals x square. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to revolve this area between this region about the x-axis. That's what we, we are trying to do. Okay, we are trying to revolve this area around the x-axis. So if I revolve this area above the x-axis, then what do I get? Well, it will be like this. Okay, and then here, this will be the solid there will be a hole in it, okay? There is this hole in it, and this will be the solid. So remember that. Now, my question is, which one is big R and which one is small r? All we need to figure out is which one, in this case, let us forget about this one now. All we need to know is from here, come on. Sorry guys, my graph is just, okay. So there are two R, one is this from here to here. Another is all the way from here to here. So notice that this will be your R of X, which is your F of X. Okay, this is your f, which is your square root x. Now, this part right here is your small r of x, which is your g of x, 
which is actually x squared. Okay, now we figure out which one is uh, bigger and which one is smaller. So we can find the volume of the solid of revolution, which is given by V equals pi A to B um, R of X square minus R of X square DX. So the big R is actually pi what is A and what is B? We need to find out the point of intersection, guys. So the interval is not given. So can you find point of intersection? Let me just do this here. Let me move this figure a little bit to the other side so that I'll have a space here to work. And we need to find the point of intersection. Let me just find point of intersection here. Point of intersection is given by um, this g of x equals f of x, which means x squared equals e square root x, which is x power four equals Come on, minus, okay, uh, x is x power four equals x So we have point of intersection zero to one. So we have A equals so, A equals zero and B equals one. So let me just plug in that value. A is zero, B is one and R, the big R is uh, here. We have big R, which is square root X, right? A square root X is square minus a small R means X is square square dx. So that's going to give me pi uh, 0 to 1. So this will be x minus x power 4 dx. And so we get pi. Um, this will be x squared over 2 minus x power 5 over 5 and 0 to 1. And let me know what is your answer. This will give you, I believe, this will be, if you simplify it, you're going to get, I leave it to you. And I believe it will be 3 pi over 10. But I want to verify this with your answer. Okay. Now, one thing very important, guys. In this case, if the graph has uh, some hole in it, like for example, in the earlier case, in, in, in all the other cases before the disk method that we use, the graph was like this, okay? Like let's say this one, and we are trying to um, find the volume of solid of revolution when we have all this part is the saddle region area, okay? But in this case, this is the saddle region. So that means we have a hole in it. When we revolve about the x-axis, we'll get a hole in it. So whenever we have a hole, then we need to use the uh, Wasser method. Just keep that in mind, okay? And this part B, I leave it to you. Uh, you may want to try this just for fun, okay? So this part B, just try. If there is any questions or concern, we'll discuss in our next class.